Hi, I'm Milton Chang of Bonsai Heirloom. I will show you how I try to fine tune this tree to get ready for a trade show that's coming up, for a show, Bonsai show, that's coming up in about three weeks. That brings up the subject of styling. Uh, many of you, Romy, seem like very concerned about how you style a tree. You know, it doesn't matter. The bonsai is what you imagine the nature to look like, your ideal vision of nature. So if you see a tree in the wild that you really like, you go home and simulate it into a bonsai, or a tree in your park or your grandfather's house, in fact, recently I saw a video by Ubrana, an uh, old classic called The Seven Magnificent Seven. And it has one tree that may even be dead, but the horses stop there and you can just see it so grotesquely beautiful. And I'm really aspired to, to do one just like that. So the tree doesn't matter, it's what you imagine it to be. Now the interesting history about this tree is that I visited China as a tourist oh, about 17, 20 years ago. And I visited the famous tourist site called Huangshan. At that time, it's not as crowded as today. You can see beautiful pine trees, old pine trees growing out of a rock, just like bonsai trees. It's really inspiring. So when I came home, I say I want to recreate that sense of trees growing out of a rock. And I was living in Southern California, so that must be about 25 years ago. So I went to uh, the nursery supply or a landscaping supply house and bought this piece of rock. It's called Desert Rose, which is a rock you find in Arizona and Utah in the desert. And then I put two little elm trees, one gallon elm trees. Uh, these are the Catlin uh, dwarf, Catlin elm, which the leaves are very a little bit more glossy than the regular elm and also uh, very, the leaves reduced to very nice small size. And so that is the beginning of the tree, which looked not much different from this, very sparse. But over 20, 25 years, this is what it looks today. And I'm very happy with it, I'm proud of it, but still every year we we'll fine tune it. So let me go through the fine tuning process, begin by saying it's all too easy to see the tree and not see the forest. In a sense, you're gonna jump right into wiring and, and the cutting and to shape it to shape and lose sight of the big picture. So what I like to do is to do the big picture first, just a rough pruning and to see where the shape ought to become and then do the fine pruning to continue the thought process. So what you wanna do is an outline of the tree. So I can do that fairly quickly. Uh, if I want this part to grow more, then I cut less, right? And uh, so that eventually it will be longer. It's like uh, cutting hair. The, the hairdresser cuts off uh, the big chunks first, a rough cut, and then fine tuning it. So that's what I'm doing exactly. Just think of it as uh, giving your bones a haircut, but keeping in mind what the shape you want to maintain and leave those alone so that it will show. And later on, you will clip off the dense part so the, the details of the tree will show rather than a big lump, which most bonsai are so proud of their growth that are like a hat on the top, which is, I think is really uh, too bad to hide the, the beautiful trunks. So if I look at this tree, this is fine. But this part really needs to be longer, maybe more towards this way. And so that's where wiring and anchoring can do. Otherwise, it's sticking out too far, uh, which is not too bad. But one thing to keep in mind about deciduous trees is that the sun is coming up from top in general in, in open uh, ground. And so the tree tend to be more hemispherical and the side to be this way. So from that standpoint, this is a very nice big branch, but that may need to be cut back so that to show it's more like a asymmetry where the semicircle is more this way than this way symmetrical. So I will look at that later to maybe get rid of uh, this branch coming back this way. So for example, this is a beautiful branch, but you have to be brutal. It, it's just out of, out of place. So for sure you wanna cut off this one I want this tree to be a little shorter than the other side. I think this, this is about the height I want it to be. I, I don't want this to grow back. I want this to be more 
semi-circles well, that means this one has to grow out more. And so I will cut back some of these. Like this one shouldn't be sticking out like this. So this one, I wanted to grow back a little bit, maybe even make that an apex. So this would be like another tree growing out of the rock. So I will uh, probably do this, make this the apex and cut out this. So you will have a, more or less a tree growing out of the rock, coming out this way and going out this way. And in time, it will look nice. Uh, it doesn't look nice immediately. And then this one doesn't belong, so it goes. So now uh, I have a framework of the design. I think this one is too long because this like to go this way, so this goes. And now I have the outline of the tree and I'm trying to figure out a way after the show to get this branch back there and even cut off this one so that it's more sticking out as it should be. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna leave it alone because it's a subjective decision. I will now come in and do each branch very carefully because this is for show, so it has to be done to perfection. A good example would be this branch. Think of it as like an apex and a tree grow out, uh, grow down. And so very carefully, I cut off this piece which doesn't belong. And then now you have a in, in four weeks, this will grow out, and this is the apex. So this, it'll be like this king coming up and coming down. What I'll do is I'll show you the tree at the show to see how it filled out in, in four weeks' time to look decent at a show. You don't want to be too, you want to be dense to show that, that it's growing healthy, but you don't want to be too dense to hide the design of the tree because the beauty is in, in fact in the how the uh, uh, the uh, trunks develop now you want this tree to grow that way so you cut off this so when it filled out it's not too full but it's full enough to show it's a healthy growing tree the fact about bonsai is not about starving your tree but make them grow very fast and healthy, and so give you a lot of opportunity to fine tune it, to redesign it. So I won't bore you with the rest of the details, but you can see each branch you need to go through that to do the fine tuning so that it will look clean and then will fill up some with the, uh, the new growth. Uh, it looked very nice. I would take my time to prune each branch and then show the, the end result by showing the, the tree at the show in three or four weeks time. So um, two weeks ago, I uh, worked on this piece of it and you can see new leaves are sprouting out everywhere. Since then, I finished it about three, four days ago, or maybe a week ago. You can see the new leaves are starting to sprout out but not as nicely as those. So if you want to do a show, you probably want to clip an elm maybe four weeks to five weeks in advance so that you see the new leaves coming out, which is very pleasant. And so I completed the front. Uh, the tree looks really nice. Uh, uh, this tree truly has never been wired. Aside from like I would tie a string to pull this one to that side because it was going out too much. And then as I mentioned last time, uh, the two were almost the same size. So I cut drastically, cut off this piece and use this to start over again. You can see now there's some rhyme to it. This is a smaller tree, that's a bigger tree. This is uh, more or less a tree that's being prepared for the show this weekend at the Seibuku show. And as usual, I let the tree grow wild and before the show, clipping it to finalize it, to clean it up. To summarize, I use the clip and grow method to create the interesting angles and then you want to finish the tree maybe five weeks ahead of the show for elm and maple maybe six weeks ahead of the show so new leaves will be emerging and that's very pleasant to look at and uh, so these are the two 
trees I will be showing at the show. This is a, my oldest tree that I've been working on the, for the longest. It started as a 15-gallon landscaping tree, uh, Prostrata juniper in Orange County, and uh, this is probably 45 years ago. So this is uh, probably a 60-year-old tree, and you can see it thicken and the age very nicely. Uh, this, I, for, I, I don't keep track of my uh, timing too much. But uh, this tree was one, these are one gallon size trees, probably 25 years ago. And I just continuously work on it. You can see it shows the time, age of the trees. So you just have to be patient, keep working on it to improve a year after year and it looks nice after a long time. Thank you very much for watching the video. And if you think that my video is useful and informative, please like, click our uh, sign on to uh, uh, subscribe to our video so we can keep you notified of new material. We plan to do one Q&A a, a week and then maybe three or four video a week. So there will be plenty of material, uh, pl plenty of ideas to share with you what I learned the hard way over the last 45 years. So with that in mind, thank you and goodbye.